So, oh, you know, there's a lot of you here today, and then over the weekend, you've heard a lot of stuff. You've, we've got a lot of great information. But I know there's some of you that are still wondering if this thing will work. And, uh, you, you're, you're, you know, you've got a lot of things going on in your life. I want to take you back a few years. Uh, uh, when I was first introduced, uh, I got a phone call from Marcel. The phone rang. I actually uh, saw his name on the caller ID. I turned around walked back to the couch. My wife said, who's calling? I said, it's Marcel. She said, well, well how come you not answer the phone? I said, because every time he calls, it's about some stupid network marketing deal, and I'm not listening anymore. She said, well, you don't know that. So uh, I said, well, you answer the phone. So she goes over, and she answers the phone, and 30 seconds into the conversation, I hear her ask, well, what's the name of the company? So <laughs> I now start making fun of the two of them. So she has to walk into the other room, and, and after about an hour, she comes out and says, oh, you've got to listen to this. I'm like, no, I don't. Yes, you do. And she shoved the phone up against my face and said, listen. And uh, I said, okay, Marcel, here's the deal. You come down from Utah. You go bass fishing with me. Until you do that, well, you know, no talking. So I, you know, hung up the phone and thought, well, that's all good. Trish was like, I can't believe you just told him that. I said, ah, he'll get over it. You know, and we uh, went back to doing work. At the time, I owned a window washing business, a lawn care business, a landscaping company. And so we worked from 4 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock at night, six days a week. Uh, we were busy. I knew network marketing worked because I had several of my clients that had been very successful in this industry. And so I was around it. Um, well, about four days later... About uh, 4 o'clock in the morning, my doorbell rings. I'm thinking, for hallelujah, my uh, employees for once in their life showed up on time. And I open the door, and there's Marcel standing there, and he's got his two little boys, and he goes, let's go fishing. Oh, man. I will go fishing anytime, anywhere, but I did not want to have to go out there to listen how we were going to have Ferraris and mansions and yachts and planes and all that. It's like, you know, it's like, so we went out, we fished, we came back, and we sat down and we talked. Hey. You know, and some people say, Eric, today, man, you, uh, you, you know, you do good presentation stuff, and we want you to come over here, and we want you to do this and that. It wasn't always that way. You know, my, when uh, Marcel uh, first contacted us, like Trisha said, we were one vehicle. Um, we'd had a lot of situations happen, and, and uh, you know, my, my daily routine was kept pretty simple. I had a uh, tan pair of uh, khaki, or little khaki shorts, a red shirt, baseball hat, some uh, white shoes that had turned green from the lawn, and uh, tube socks. And that was my uniform. We kept it the same color every day in case I got confused. And, uh, you know, so every day it was the same thing over and over and over. Well, as Marcel and my wife talked, they got excited about things, and they started making things happen. And, uh, you know, when he talked to us, I, it made sense. But for a year, guys, I did nothing. I was an incubator. Marcel would come down from Utah, drive, you know, 12, 14 hours to get there. And when he got into town, I would literally leave. And the one thing that Marcel never did is he didn't say, well, Eric, why weren't you there? How come you didn't did come? I thought you, you knew I was coming. He'd ask me, how was the fishing? How was the golfing? Did you do any good? He just loved on me. Well, you know, after a while, because of all the things that were going on in our life, something clicked. I got mad. I came home one night, and I uh, so I told Trish, I said, give me an application. She said, what for? I said, I'm going to go sign some people up in this crazy thing. She, she says, uh, she says, do you even know what this uh, thing's about? I said, I'll figure it out. I said, all right, here's your application. People, and I've built this business, guys, half the time, just mad. I, I was just mad. I was sick and tired of people telling me what I could do and what I couldn't do. If we needed a creditor to call, all we had to do was hang up the phone. I mean, we just, I was tired of making the bank's dreams come true and not mine. Guys, I was, I was sick and tired of it. It just seemed like as soon as we'd get ahead, something would happen. Any of you feel like that? Hey? People say, well, Eric, you shouldn't be all building this thing mad. This is a great thing. Well, you know what? There's a lot of people in this world that have been mad, that have done some things. He's protecting that uh, matching bonus. And mind you, it's a very good one. There's a lot of people that have gotten mad in this world, that have made a difference. You know, General Washington, when he crossed the Delaware in the middle of the winter, in the middle of the night, to go... 
take care of business with the enemy. He was sick and tired of the situation he was in. He was tired of living over there in the cold and in the snow and no food and no money and the soldiers had blood on their feet staying in the snow. He was tired of it. He's like, this is it. We're going across there and we're going to finish this deal. Okay? Lincoln. He got tired of the, the situation with the slaves. He said, what, why are they slaves? We, we need to be equal. Got mad. Fix that situation. You got other people. Rosa Parks. She got mad. So why can't I sit where I want to sit? Some of you need to get mad. You will only tolerate what you can stand. And once you finally get angry enough, you'll make a change happen. Because from that time forward, I got home, I was out the door. Marcel said, how many nights can you work this thing? I said, I can work Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's it, from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock. And I'll promise you this, you will never have to call me and ask me, what am I doing at that time? Because I will be out there building this thing. Guys, and I, our, our business was no different. People laughed at us. They made fun of us. We got no-showed. Okay, I got a no-show. I drove from Phoenix, Arizona to Seattle, Washington. Got up there, knock on the door. Nobody's there. Call the guy and said, hey, we're here. Oh, dude, I forgot to tell you. We moved yesterday. Well, okay, where at? Oh, we're in San Diego now. Yeah, that have been no-showed. We used to do meetings at my house. I mean, we do these. We, me and Tyler were laughing about this the other day. We had no idea what we were doing. I mean, we, we got this PowerPoint projector. We thought, oh, that'll be the thing. So we bring it over to my house, and we, we literally had no place to really, you know, project the thing. So we pointed it on the ceiling, got some popcorn, and acted like we were watching a movie. All this time, I'm going out there, and, you know, and we'd made some goals with our kids that, if, you know, if we sign up five people, then we're going to uh, go over to Cold Stone Creamery. And every night, if I got an application, I'd stick it on the refrigerator, and they'd run down in the morning to see if we'd done it. Well, we got to that point. We took it out of Cold Stone Creamery. That was all that we could do, guys. That was all that we had at that point. And then I remember we said, okay, if we get 10, we're going to go to Peter Piper Pizza, and we're going to splurge. We're going to get $20 worth of tokens, and you four kids can split it. Well, that five and six years old, that meant a lot, okay? We had a goal that uh, we'd go to Disneyland. You know, we hit a, hit a certain rank, we'd go to Disneyland. Well, we hit it. I'm telling you, that was one of the most precious days of my life as Cinderella took my little girl and took her all alone by herself and just talked to her and made her feel special. As I stood there in front of the, 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 the castle, and I happened to look down at my feet at that point. It says, when you wish upon a star, it makes no difference who you are. Magic moment. I remember when my daughter, she said, Dad, all I ever want is a horse. She said, I don't want anything else. She said, Dad, I, just, I would want a horse. You don't have to give me anything else. I just would love to have one someday. I think they're the most beautiful animal in the world. Well, when we hit Pro 7, um, I was still laid up there in bed with the, the shoulder thing, but we got a chance to go over and, and uh, I bought a horse and my brother helped me put it all together and we went over to the arena and uh, while I was at the arena getting things all set up, some cowboys started to realize there's something going on here. So they all cleared the stadium. My wife had been driving the kids around the neighborhood, stuff blindfolded. She pulled up to the thing and, and uh, she got them out in the car. One of the cowboys' wives came over and said, we want to videotape this with you. So they took that, and I had this beautiful horse out in the center of the arena. And uh, my wife said, uh, okay, we want to introduce you to the newest member of our family. And they took off their blindfolds. My 15-year-old daughter just started to sob, touch my heart. And then those cowboys just let me walk her around that arena, just share that special moment with her, magic moment, Okay. We've had a lot of magic moments in this business. You know, Trisha covered a few of the things that uh, we've gone through, but I think she skipped some. <laughs> Just checking. Okay. 
when I was backstage, Eric Merchant's like, man, I'm so glad you're all geared up. And I said, don't worry, Dave Brown's already my lawyer. You're too late. <laughs> okay. I have a list of things that we have done, gone through. Because, you know, we're no different than you. Life happens. You know, as I would go out and I'd do presentations, I thought I was doing pretty good. We got to a meeting one time, and uh, Trisha gets up there, and she starts telling people about how she used to get phone calls. As soon as I'd get done with a meeting, she would uh, get a phone call. And, uh, you know, as I was walking in the house, she said, how was it? I said, oh, it was awesome. Well, her phone call was people calling up and saying, if he ever comes again, we quit. So how was the meeting, Eric? Oh, it was awesome. Oh, you're the man. You are the man. Way to go. She let me just come into my own. Then we're out and about a whole bunch of people, and she, she tells that story. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, I thought I was doing good. You know, again, we're no different. Let me show you a couple things what we've done here. Broke my back, laid it up for nine months, dislocated my hip, ruptured a disc in my back, 11 back surgeries, knee surgery, staph infection occurred in the knee. I had a one week in the hospital. They told me I might lose my leg. Uh, son was born with a birth defect, and then they sent him home with us so he could die. Cut off my finger at work just because I stopped to help out because the guys were running a little behind. That required three micro hand surgeries at the Mayo Clinic to repair it. Ruptured my intestine. I uh, ended up in the hospital from sheer exhaustion. I was 12 hours away from being dead. They said, if your wife hadn't brought you in, you wouldn't have made it through the night. We, uh, we also didn't have any insurance at that time. I re injured my back, spent another eight weeks in recovery. We had our engine go out on our car and the vehicles more than once. We only had one car for a year. We lost all of our savings due to the medical situation. We had once sold our house. And a lot of, like of you, we lost money in the situation. Um, we were actually uh, uh, moving into a new home. But because of the economy and the way things were going, uh, we'd sold our house. We went to live with this uh, couple of people in our neighborhood. Gracious couple. They said, you can come live with us. So I'd have my family of six in the back bedroom there. That's where we stayed. And we were there for about uh, four months. And I was just, you know, things were, I knew that in a, by January, things would be good. Then on December 10th, my birthday, this fine gentleman that had let us graciously live in his home, he said, I hate to tell you this, but uh, we have, our kids are coming in for Christmas, and we're going to have to ask you to find you a place. It was my birthday. I spent the rest of the day driving around the neighborhood. What am I to do? What am I going to do? I didn't have any money to pay first month's rent or last month's rent. I finally get a phone call from a lady who is a realtor friend of ours. She says, hey, I got a house for you. You can go stay in it if you'd like. She says, I know your situation. You just pay me the rent as soon as you get your check. I said, thank you very much. She wouldn't tell me where it was at, but I thought it was a pretty good idea, so I started driving the neighborhood. As I pulled into this neighborhood, I see a house where a bunch of uh, uh, loading was taking place into some trucks and trailers. I thought, well, that must be the one they're cleaning up. Walk into there, they got two full-size trucks and two full-size trailers just piled with garbage. I walked into the house... And there was garbage piled this high. You could hardly make a path through the house. Uh, they had 26 people living there with five dogs. The whole wall was, and ceilings was literally looked just black with cockroaches and different things like that. This is where I got to take my family. I took pictures of all those things, but on the way home I deleted them because I didn't want them to see that. My wife... We got together once it got all fairly cleaned up. She did her magic and we made it a home. We continue to work. Um, you know, I had uh, that uh, same house. It was a short time later. We found out that the landlord had quit paying the uh, mortgage, so we were then asked to leave. This is, uh, you know, I had nowhere to go. We thought we had some things put together, but we we're still working on that. Um, that year for Christmas, we were the charitable family that the church took under our wing. We didn't have any money for the kids. We had, uh, you know, all during that time, 
I didn't give up. All that while, I took the one car that we had, a brand new Chrysler 300 that we, Trish was a dream car. We finally got her that. And about the time we got her, that is when I decided I was going to get serious. Put over 200,000 miles in that car. That's eight times around the earth in one year. It's 66 oil changes, 44 tire rotations, and five sets of tires. The best thing is I'm still on the original set of brakes. <laughs> I informed Kirby of that as we were coming home from Tucson one night doing 100 miles an hour. I said, you know what's really cool about this car, Kirby? It's still the original brakes. <laughs> He's not hanging on for life. Did over 4,300 presentations. That's about equivalent to 10 to 12 a day. Our group now does over a million dollars a month in business. Since we've been in Life Vantage, we've done about $10 million worth of product business volume. That means that over $5 million worth of commissions have been paid down through our organization to families who needed it just as bad as we did. We created, down through our organization, we got uh, two Pro 9s, seven Pro 7s, 13 Pro 6s, 38 Pro 5s, 100 Pro 4s, 138 Pro 3s, 505 Pro 2s, and 879 Pro 1s. There are no more excuses! If we're going to take this company into the 21st century to be the company that it is, then we have to step up to the plate. How many in here feel like they're very good at what they do? Raise your hand. Well, I'm here to inform you that very good will get you fired. And today, you have to be amazing. What I mean by that, I once had, I bought a, a flip phone. It had color, it had texting, it had to take pictures, it could take videos. It was a great it was very good. I threw very good away because of the iPhone. The iPhone was amazing. You need to be amazing. If you want to succeed in this business, you got to step up the game. This business, a couple of things that you're going to have to learn how to do. You're going to have to, uh, you're going to, have to learn how to uh, be, a, be a team player. Okay? You're going to have to transition. You're going to have to go from a transitional leader to a servant leader. Okay. This company needs leaders. A leader, a servant leader, like Skip Campbell, Tyler, Jason, Bill and Cynthia, Blue, Colt. These are servant leaders. The secret to this business is not what you can do for yourself, but what you can do for others. If you learn this one thing. This is the secret to this business. Do with others what they don't think that they can do for themselves until they eventually realize it, that they can. And if you'll help enough people achieve their dreams, you'll be taken care of. Okay? You need to be amazing. This business... This business is not about pro tandem. It's not about life vantage. It's not about true science. This business has been referred to as a people business or relationship business. The great thing about this business is that we get to work with people. The bad thing about this people is we get to work business is we get to work with people. Okay? Remember that because that'll serve you well. Okay? This business, you need to learn how to create relationships. If you were to take this company into the 21st century, your relationships will take you there. The people that you work with upline and downline and crossline, you need to have the ability to get along with others. You need to be able to be forgiving and understanding and patient. You need to be able to go serve people. I remember when Chris Michaels called me one day and he says, Eric, I figured it out. I said, what do you get? He says, this business ain't about you and I, is it? I said, nope. Never has been, never will be. A couple months later, he went pro seven. Guys, anybody can do what we've done. 
We're no different than any of you. We just made a decision to go do it. You can let these things that are happening in your life, you can use them as an excuse to not do anything, or you can use them as your motivation to go get it done. I believe that what we have here with Life Vantage is very special. I think that uh, the relationships that you have here, if you'll continue to nurture them and continue to work with the people that you are around you, that those relationships will eventually turn into friendships. You know, as soon as the other day, when uh, word got out to David and Kirby that I had a situation with my eye, they were the first people there. When I broke my shoulder a little over a year ago, when I was completely out, first guy was there was Kirby. These guys are servant leaders. What can we do for you? I respect that. I remember when we first come home from meeting uh, Dave Brown, I called uh, Tricia and she says, so what, what did you see? I said, well, I met this guy named Dave Brown. And he's a lot like Kirby. She says, then I'm in. Nothing more had to be said. Just tell me about it when you get home. I believe that so long as we take care of this business and watch over and protect it, that eventually it will grow into the, the business that we believe it will be. That's going to take some effort on our part. We can't overstate the incomes. We can't overstate, you know, what the product can and cannot do. We got to watch out for this thing. If we screw this thing up, there's nobody to blame but us. You know, when I got started years ago washing windows, I always wondered why other people were successful. I started asking them, what, what did you do different? And every one of these guys that were making a million dollars or more and a hundred individuals that I talked to over 12 years, they all told me the same thing. I said, Eric, it had really nothing to do with our education. It was who we knew and when we knew that person. I believe that every one of you are here for a reason. I don't think it was accidental that Dr. McCord was the scientist who discovers SOD over 40 years ago and then thousands of scientists and researchers study that product and then 40 years later, he's the one that helps figure out how to restart that in the body. I don't think it was accidental that uh, the meeting with, with Jason Domingo and, and uh, uh, David Brown occurred. I mean, what are the chances that... Uh, you know, David, in the worst economy in the history of the United States, would hire all these employees that stood up on principle. What are the odds of that? I look at all the thin threads that have brought my life into this business and the people that we know. I don't think it was accidental. Your being here is not accidental. All I ever wanted was my turn. I once asked my dad, I said, Dad, was I born in the wrong family? So what do you mean? So it seems like everybody else gets their chance. Well, what's wrong with the Albrechtsons? Why can't we have our chance? You know, as I'd be out there washing windows, I thought, man, I want to do something with my life. Who just, be, you know, just rather than just wash windows and make a landscape. You know, I like that. It was fun. But I wanted more. I wanted more out of life. And I thought, man, I got more to give. Is there any of you that think that way? When life vantage came into my life, this is my turn. I believe that everything that I'd gone through up to this point has prepared us for this moment. I believe that every one of you that are here today are leaders. And everything that you've done has prepared you to be a part of this. You have an important role to play in this company. And it's time for you to step up to the plate and fulfill that role. I believe that when we do that, then the world will know life vantage. I just wanted my turn. That's it. That's all I ever. And when I got my turn, I was going to make the most of it. Guys, people called me crazy. I said, oh, you're crazy. You're running around doing what you're doing. Yeah? Call me crazy. Crazy's nice. <laughs> We're excited for you guys. But today is a new day. Today is the 
the first day of the rest of your life. My dad used to tell me that every day. So if you don't like what you've got, then you've got to do something different. Hey, if you keep doing what you're always doing, then you're always going to get what you've already got. Well, we made a change so we could go make a difference. I want you guys to finish the race that you've started. 